Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Hello and welcome to Identive Healthcare Solutions webinar. Today we're going to be sharing our next-gen add-on solution, ChartGuard. My name is Chelsea Grover and I'm the Marketing Communications Coordinator for Identive. I'd like to take a moment to explain the process for today's presentation. First and foremost, I'd like to mention that this webinar will be recorded and we also will be uh, sending links out with um, copies of the recording as well as links to the PDF later for your review if you'd like to see those. So next, for those of you who aren't familiar with Itenev, I wanted to share a bit of who we are with you. We've been in business as Itenev since 2003, but we've been next-gen users since 1997, EPM version 2.3. We specialize specifically in next-gen healthcare. Our development team knows how to get data into, out of, and around next-gen to customize it and tailor it to meet our clients' unique needs. It's our passion to provide solutions for our healthcare provider partners, which in turn help them to improve patient care, enhance the patient experience, and maintain a financially healthy practice. Basically, we do everything next-gen, from consulting to hosting, customization to support, and to next-gen add-on productivity solution, ChartGuard, which is what we'll be discussing today, and Refund Manager. Next, as many of you probably know, Itenum presents complimentary educational webinars frequently. I wanted to mention that our next one is going to be next Wednesday, so a week from today, and it's going to be on telemedicine. I'll be sending out the invite to that later today, so make sure to keep your eyes open for that. Okay, so back to ChartGuard. At the end of the presentation, we're going to open the floor up to questions from you. We're going to answer all the questions at the end, but you may type them in the questions area of the webinar control panel whenever they occur to you. And for audio clarity purposes, everyone's phone is going to remain muted throughout the entire webinar. If you experience audio issues, please use the chat box to let us know so we can resolve them. And again, questions may be entered in the questions box. So without further delay, I'd like to introduce our presenters for today. Tom Seiko is Itenev's Business Development Manager, and Joel Schultz is Director of Product Solutions at Itenev. Joe's going to be available to help with questions at the end, because he's one of the really technical guys who actually helped to create this product. So, Tom, I'm going to go ahead and pass the webinar off to you. Feel free to get started when you're ready. All right. Thank you very much, Chelsea. So, today we're going to talk about uh, ChartGuard, our downtime solution. Here's an agenda. Uh, so, what we're going to cover today is we're going to cover what is ChartGuard. We'll talk about EHR dependencies. We'll talk about why practices buy ChartGuard. Uh, we'll talk about how uh, ChartGuard works. And then I'll show you the output of ChartGuard that gets generated. Uh, and then I'll cover a, a brief attentive overview, and then we can answer any questions that you have. So what is ChartGuard? ChartGuard is a business continuity solution that ensures the availability of patient charts during EHR downtime. It's a solution that addresses downtime preparedness at each of your clinic locations, practice locations, health center locations. These uh, next few slides, we're just going to cover uh, a little background on why you should consider purchasing or looking at a business continuity solution for your practice, your, your uh, clinic, or your health center. Uh, first of all, uh, HIPAA has a clause in it that says we need to establish and implement as needed policies and procedures for responding to emergency or other occurrence that damages systems that contain electronic protected health information. So you need to have some type of a, a backup plan, disaster recovery plan, emergency mode operation plan in place to be able to um, activate when a system goes down, um, you have an emergency in your area. Second uh, is we have become so dependent on technology in our industry and we've become so dependent on technology in our lives. Uh, the technology all around us has become very complex, uh, and particularly in our systems of EHR systems and EPM systems, uh, we have many components that make up the complex technology uh, that we use. We have servers, we have workstations, we have tablets, we have scanners, we have local area networks, we have T1 lines, we have VPNs, we have wireless connections, we have internet connections, hosting connections, power systems, cooling systems, and be, behind each one of these components, there is software that runs each one of them as well. So at any one point in time, one of these components can go down, which causes us to lose uh, access to our systems. And uh, so with that complexity, which becomes much easier for us to use, uh, behind the scenes, it's, it's very, very complex. So when we lose uh, access to our EHR system, what does that mean to us? Well, that means that we could have an impact on the quality of care that we provide. We could have a lost productivity. Uh, we could lose revenue. Uh, there are some studies out there that have been done 
that uh, try to determine what the cost of losing access to your EHR system is to a particular practice. And some studies have come up with a number of $488 per hour per provider. So it can be quite expensive to, uh, to lose access to your system. So what are our options when we, uh, when we lose access to our EHR system? We have a downtime situation. Well, we could temporarily close the practice and location. Uh, we could go to paper charts, but that's becoming more difficult for us to do because we've become so dependent now on our technology systems to be able to go back to paper charts would be uh, a massive undertaking probably. Uh, we don't update our paper charts. We're updating our systems. We can implement fully redundant technologies. Uh, so we can implement additional servers, we can addi uh, implement additional network, uh, another data center, more power systems, more cooling systems. But when we do that, we're adding more costs and increasing the cost, and we're adding more components to what I just mentioned as far as the complexity of technology. Uh, we could go to hosting, but that has its risks as well, because with hosting, you still have to get to the Internet to be able to get to your system. So you still have that issue as well. This is a, a, a slide that, that uh, covers examples of failures. I won't go into each one of them, but I will point out a couple of them to you. One is the, the second bullet that says sprinkler line failed. Um, we don't have sprinkler lines in computer rooms. In this particular case, what happened was there was a sprinkler line outside of the computer room that had failed and started leaking water all over. And the water started to seep into the server room. So in this particular case, they had to shut down the server room uh, which then uh, it, uh, caused the access at the remote locations uh, to be lost as well. In the middle of the screen, uh, we had uh, in um, July of last year, so about a year ago, uh, United Airlines, New York Stock Exchange, Wall Street Journal, Brookings Institute all had failures on the same day. You may or may not have heard about this, um, but in this particular case, uh, United Airlines had a network connectivity issue that caused by that was caused by a router uh, that caused it to ground hundreds of flights worldwide for two hours. Uh, the New York State Stock Exchange had a faulty software upgrade that caused them to stop trading for four hours. Uh, the Wall Street Journal um, website had um, an unusual a high number of people coming into their website and they weren't prepared for it from a capacity standpoint. So uh, they had a failure on that because of too many people coming in. And then the Brookings Institute uh, was offline that same day for an hour due to a content publishing error. Uh, the point of this is that if you look at United Airlines, the, the New York Stock Exchange, the Wall Street Journal, Brookings Institute, they're all built for 24-7, 365 days a week uptime. And, and they're built to, um, to have systems that don't come down. Well, as, as uh, was experienced on that particular day, um, these systems came down and had issues. Uh, and a lot of these issues are, are behind, beyond our control. In, uh, in May of this year, uh, Time, Water, Time Warner Cable and Cox uh, in New York City and Massachusetts and Rhode Island lost internet connections because of multiple fiber cuts that were done by a company called Level 3 in Pennsylvania, Massachusetts. So they lost connection as well. And that, again, is beyond their control. That's a construction, uh, construction problem. The, um, I think in 2012, there was a, a number of construction incidents that caused um, internet connection loss. And uh, that totaled about 185,000 incidents, uh, that, uh, construction incidents that caused us to lose internet connections. So, Construction is a major cause of, of, uh, of lost connectivity. And uh, um, I was talking to a, a, um, a company a couple months ago, and they had lost their internet connection. They thought it was construction uh, going on around them because there was a bunch of backhoes and, and construction going on around their office. When they looked into it, they found out that, that they didn't lose it because of that. What they ultimately found out was that they were having some construction done in their office space, and one of the construction guys had gone into the wall and, and cut a wire. And, uh, and that's how they ended up losing, uh, losing access. So it can happen at any time, uh, like I mentioned, uh, beyond our control. 
And as I mentioned earlier, the four hundred eighty-eight dollars uh, an hour at a time provider practice, four hours of downtime can cost uh, nineteen thousand five hundred twenty dollars. So it can uh, it can be quite expensive. So the questions that you need to ask when you're considering a business continuity solution and looking at this is, do I pursue an uptime solution or do I pursue a solution that enables me to continue on with my business until NextGen comes back online? Uh, us in IT, uh, we have a, a pension for trying to get to 100% uptime. And you know we can't get there. There's always going to be a 0.9999 uh, percentage that we'll have some downtime. So we're never going to be perfect. But as we add more components, as I mentioned earlier, um, it can get quite expensive as we're, as we're building it out. The question isn't whether your, your clinic, your practice, your health center will lose connectivity. The question is, how do I minimize the loss and minimize the disruption when it does happen? Uh, another question is, am I going to be react, reactive or proactive in my clinic's preparedness for downtime? Uh, have I had an outage? So if I have, I'm going to be, you know, reactive. Uh, if I haven't had an outage, am I going to be proactive in my clinic's preparedness for a downtime situation? Uh, what are the types of impacts that a next-gen downtime incident can have on our clinic, our health center, our practice? So the impacts of lost revenue, the impacts of uh, patient care, the impacts of patient satisfaction, uh, you know, what kind of impacts uh, would my particular situation have when uh, I lose access to next-gen? And then the last question to, to think about is, how significant can the impact be to our, our clinic, our, our practice, our health center, based on the duration of downtime? Um, in, uh, in the case of just a, a blip, you might be out for five minutes, ten minutes, but in the case of a construction uh, incident, you could be out for a few hours. So, you know, what's the significance of the impact based on the duration of downtime? Take a look at, you know, length of duration. Uh, some organizations I've talked to have been out for a, a day or two because of a, a situation. So, you know, think about, think about that as well because they do happen. So an option that we have uh, available to you is, is ChartGuard. And ChartGuard is an affordable business continuity solution that ensures your practice productive, profitable, and secure during HR downtime. Uh, we create ChartGuard creates uh, clinical records that are available offline as PDF files, making them easy to access and easy to read. So how does, uh, how does ChartGuard work? Well, ChartGuard works. It's a software that gets loaded on your server where your EHR is located. Uh, it runs every night at a particular time. And when it runs, it goes out to the appointment book listing and looks for the um, patients that are scheduled to come in to each of your locations. Uh, it then goes out and pulls the chart information for each of those patients that are scheduled to come in and puts it into a file. It then converts that file into a PDF format. And then it begins to send out the PDF files to each of your locations where the uh, patients are going to be seen so that it's stored locally on a uh, local PC uh, resident at each of the locations. Uh, the PDF files are indexed, so it makes it easy for uh, the providers to be able to, to find the information that they're looking for, and I'll, and I'll show you an example of this as well. Um, and then the PDF files um, are customizable as far as moving information around from one location in the uh, layout to another location within the layout. But simply, that's how, how it works. So every night it runs, goes out, well, looks at the appointments that are scheduled uh, for the, the next day or a couple days forward, pulls the chart information for those patients, puts it into a file, and sends it out to a designated PC. And that PC could be a, a, a desktop PC, a laptop, a tablet, uh, any type of device that's, that's at that location that can accept the, uh, the files. So that's how, uh, that's how ChartGuard works. So within uh, ChartGuard, what do you get? Well, we, we uh, provide each location's appointment listing so that you know uh, who's coming in, uh, who they're, what they're coming in for, and who they're coming in to see, so what time the appointments are. 
uh, within the, the patient chart itself, you get the demographic information, and then you get the module information as far as the allergies, the immunizations, the labs, the medications and problems. You get the vitals, and you get uh, documents that are generated as well. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you an example of, of what gets generated by, uh, by ChartCard. So each location uh, will have a folder. Uh, so if you have multiple locations, you'll have the name of the location uh, where the folders will be stored on that designated PC that I mentioned. And then within each uh, folder, you'll have a folder of the charts of the patients, and then you'll have the appointment listing. And let me show you what the appointment listing looks like. So this is what the appointment looks like. Appointment listing looks like. You have uh, the name of the provider. You have uh, the patient that's coming in. You have the the day of the of the appointment. You have the time of the appointment, and you have what they're coming in for. Uh, this can be customized a little bit, where you can uh, add like the phone number uh, of the uh, the patient if you wanted to have that on there. Uh, you can see that so that you can make calls uh, to the patient as well. But this is what the appointment li listing looks like, and as I mentioned, each location would have their particular appointment listing uh, on the designated PC that's receiving the, this information. So let me show you what the, an example of a chart looks like. Uh, the charts are named by last name, first name, date of birth, so they're in alphabetical order, so you'll be able to see um, find them easily. And now I'm going to show you what the chart looks like. So this is what the chart looks like. The, the chart is the demographic information. So you have uh, you know, the, the patient's employer, you have their responsible party, their insurances, um, as well if you, it's a PDF file, so you can scroll uh, down, scroll up and scroll down to get the information. Here's the allergy information, what that looks like. Here's the medication information and what that looks like. Here's the lab information and what that looks like. And I mentioned earlier that they are they are bookmarked and indexed. So if you come over to the bookmark area, uh, you can get to the bookmarks and then quickly uh, look at the section that you wanted to go to. So if you wanted to go to the immunization section, you just click on that bookmark and it brings you uh, there. If you want to take a look at the family history, you could click on that and uh, quickly see what the family history is. So you have the ability to quickly go to a section by the bookmarks or scroll from section to section as well. Uh, as far as the, um, the ICS images and the documents that can be brought into the, the chart, here's an example of a document. And uh, here's the examples of the ICS images that can be brought in as well. Now the, the depth of the information that you can have on a chart, so you can control um, the depth of information, meaning you can go back, uh, say I want to see the last three months of information, or I can see the last three charts, or the last three ICS images. So you can control uh, the depth. We also provide uh, the account summary information for each individual patient. So uh, the front desk, when the patient comes in, if they need to talk to them about their account, they have the information there to talk to them about their account as well. Okay. So that is the, the patient chart and what it, what it looks like as it's generated by uh, ChartGuard. And then the appointment listing. 
as far as what it was generated by chart card as well. As I as I mentioned, you know the depth of information you can customize that, uh, but you can also uh, customize the amount of number of days forward that chart card looks so looks forward in as far as generating the appointment uh, charts. So we can look uh, one day forward, two days forward, three days forward, five days forward uh, in looking out and generating the charts for that. Now chart card um, cleans up after itself every night. So when uh, when it so tonight it runs, it would run uh, for tomorrow, Thursday, Friday's charts, and if you're open on Saturday, it could run Saturday's charts if you're looking three days forward. Um, when it runs tomorrow night, it will delete what's there and then re, uh, regenerate charts for uh, Friday, Saturday, and then uh, Monday. It can be uh, customized to match your specialty, your KBM level, and number of locations. So if you have uh, three locations or you have 50 locations, uh, chart card will work with, with that. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the appointment listing can be uh, customized as well. This is uh, just a, a testimony. We had a, a client of ours who purchased uh, chart card last year, summer of last year. And in December, they had an outage at uh, two of their biggest uh, clinics. And uh, the IT manager, their network manager, sent us an email saying, hey, we had this outage. Uh, thanks to chart card being implemented, we, we didn't have to close our clinics or turn away, turn away any patients. And uh, you know, the providers and the doctors were quite happy with the solution that we had in place. We have a, a couple versions of, of chart card. Um, the basic version that I just uh, talked about uh, we have uh, a chart card archiver version, which is uh, built for long-term storage of, of charts and clinical history. And then uh, just a little while ago, we came out with chart card on demand, which allows you to create a patient chart on request uh, for patients that come in and say, I would like to have uh, my chart or for uh, fulfilling some auto requests that come in. And you can control how much uh, history is generated. So I'm going to show you a couple, uh, just a couple slides of, of that, what the screenshots are of our chart card on demand. Here's the, uh, the search screen that allows you to quickly uh, enter in the name of the individual that you're going to generate the chart for. And uh, you can see here, you can also enter in an encounter date range as far as the, the amount of history that you want to generate for. And then the, the next slide we'll show you um, just a kind of a status screen of um, the chart and when it uh, is it generated or not so you know that it's, it's been completed so rather than uh, generating these charts overnight uh, the chart card on demand lets you enter in a, a person's chart information be able to generate that chart uh, within the same the same day So that's a new new version of chart card that has just uh, just come out. A little bit. So that's about chart card. A little bit about Itentive uh, to cover about who we are. Uh, as Chelsea mentioned, we were founded in 2003, and our mission is to create additional value for your next gen investment. Uh, we know that when you purchase next gen, it was a major purchase, and uh, and we want to work with you to get as much uh, value out of the investment as possible. As uh, Chelsea mentioned earlier, our passion is to work with our clients to improve patient care, to help you enhance the patient experience, and work with you to maintain a financially healthy practice. We've been in business for we, 16 years of experience with NextGen. Uh, we have 70 employees uh, from coast to coast, most of which are consultants that travel uh, working with our individual uh, clients. If you take the 2003 and the 16 years, uh, they don't add up, and the reason that they don't add up is uh, as Chelsea mentioned, we started as uh, the IT department for a medical organization. And back in the late 90s and early 2000s, when the uh, business mantra was focus on what you do best and outsource the rest, uh, the medical organization was going to outsource the IT department. And the leaders of the IT department said, if you want to do that, what we'd like to do is form our own company and provide services back to you. 
So they agreed to do that, and uh, from that point forward, we've worked with over 350 to 400 clients uh, that use NextGen, and uh, we've become a strategic partner with NextGen as well. We have uh, five service lines, consulting services, technology services, product solutions, information solutions, and reseller solutions. And through those five service lines, uh, we provide any one of these uh, point solutions or uh, as, an, as, a, as a single solution or we can combine them together to provide multiple solutions uh, to you. So we can do implementations and upgrades. Uh, as I mentioned, our consultants uh, can do process improvements, work model improvements, uh, business process improvements. We have a team, team of developers that can provide enhancements uh, and can to the templates and uh, we can provide next-gen support as well. Uh, we have a group of technology folks that can provide managed services to where we can uh, manage your infrastructure as far as your printers, your network infrastructure, your local area networks, your wide area networks, um, your printers, your desktops. And then we also have our own hosting center, uh, so we can provide uh, hosting for services for our clients. And then we have a team of developers that develop productivity tools, like the chart card that I just mentioned. But we also have developed uh, a couple other tools as well. Refund Manager that streamlines and automates the credit balance handling refund check processing within, uh, within an organization. Uh, we uh, have partnered with Freesia to develop the clinical interface to be able to update the clinical information uh, for NextGen. Uh, Freesia, you get the, uh, the demographic information updates. We provide the clinical interface for NextGen. And then we create a product called Doctor's Link. Uh, that integrates NextGen seamlessly to pass files to Transworld uh, systems in order to lower the cost of collections. So that concludes uh, the, uh, the presentation on ChartGuard and uh, Business Continuity Solutions. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you might have at this point in time. Great. Thank you so much, Tom. That was super informative. And if you have questions, please type them in the uh, webinar control panel in the questions area and uh, we'll read them out loud. Looks like we have a couple here so if you have them type them in now and, and, and we'll get to them and I'll just start from the beginning. Uh, let me see. Does chart card work with large groups who have more than 100 providers? Uh, yes it does. Do you want to add anything? No, I was going to say that's uh, where ChartGuard really got started is working with a large group that was in Tornado Alley and they were looking for a solution that would give them access to their clinical information with a small technology footprint. So it absolutely works for uh, large groups and of course because of that it works for smaller groups too. Great, thank you both. Uh, can you confirm that the ChartGuard data is usable even when the network is down? Joe, maybe you can take that one. Yes. Part of the architecture of ChartGuard, as I was just mentioning, was to uh, make it available when your network's not available. So what we do is we push the charts out to each of your locations based on those patient appointments. So this means if the network goes down, which as Tom was mentioning at the beginning is your most common outage, if the network goes down, you already have the charts for the patients that are scheduled to come in that day. So yes, ChartGuard will make the data available when your system, or in this case particularly, your network is not available. Thanks, Joe. And it looks like this is our last question at the moment. Um, can we use ChartGuard to give our patient a readable copy of their medical record? Absolutely. The new uh, variation of ChartGuard, ChartGuard On Demand, can be used to generate charts for a particular patient in the case of someone standing at your desk and asking to go you know maybe see a specialist or they're uh, maybe a snowbird and they're going to be you know in or out of town for a while and they want to take their records with them so it's great for those applications it's also great if you're in a larger group and you have providers coming and going and you don't want to do a high cost discrete data conversion you can um, set up sets of charts to be pulled out and then the last use for it is Insurance companies from time to time will want to do audits and the chart guard on demand will allow you to generate sets of charts that you can place on encrypted media and give to the insurance companies. Great. 
Well, it looks like that's all the questions we have, but if you think of any questions after the presentation, please don't hesitate to reach out to either Tom or to Joe, or I'll be sending out a follow-up email later this week, so you can also reply to, the, to that. Uh, you can follow us on social media. Basically, any way you can get a hold of us, we're, we're happy to answer questions, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Tom, Joe, thank you both so much for your help today, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.